One of the most extraordinary discoveries in paleoanthropology, the teenage girl known as Denisova Eleven, who was half Neanderthal and half Denisovan, was not simply a quirk of chance. Her existence was the direct outcome of the relentless rhythms of glacial and interglacial cycles that pressed populations of Neanderthals and Denisovans into contact. These cycles shifted forests, grasslands, and ice sheets across Eurasia, alternately separating and then reuniting groups that had once been isolated. In their oscillations lay the key to encounters that produced one of the most remarkable hybrids ever found in the human fossil record. When Homo sapiens finally spread across Europe in force, the stage was already occupied by Neanderthals, who had endured in Eurasia for at least 300,000 years. These cousins of ours had weathered the harsh turns of glacial freezes and warmer interglacials, adjusting their hunting strategies accordingly. Reindeer in the cold, red deer in the warmth, shifting southward when ice tightened its grip. They were resilient, but their toolkits were less specialized than ours, and their long-distance exchange networks less extensive. Homo sapiens' symbolic abilities, broader diets and stronger social ties provided a competitive edge in the face of these swings. For decades, scientists debated whether glacial cycles alone might have doomed the Neanderthals. The latest models, however, suggest otherwise. According to simulations run on the IBS Aleph supercomputer, abrupt shifts had only regional effects on human densities, and could not by themselves explain the rapid disappearance of Neanderthals between 43,000 and 38,000 years ago. Interbreeding played a role in their genetic legacy. Modern humans still carry small percentages of Neanderthal DNA, but it was competition that sealed their fate. In the model, when Homo sapiens and Neanderthals shared the same landscape, they competed for identical food resources. Even small advantages for sapiens whether in hunting efficiency, resistance to disease, or reproductive rates, were enough to drive Neanderthals to extinction. The simulations show that this was the first major extinction caused directly by our own species. Glacial cycles set the stage, but it was human competition that delivered the final blow. Glacial cycles also shaped other remarkable encounters. The Denisovans, a mysterious sister group to Neanderthals, appear to have been more cold-adapted, thriving in boreal forests and tundra, while Neanderthals preferred temperate forests and grasslands. For much of their history, these preferences kept them apart geographically. Denisovans in the northeast of Eurasia, Neanderthals in the southwest. But during warmer interglacials, when temperate forests expanded eastward, the two groups' habitats overlapped. These overlaps increased the likelihood of encounters, leading to interbreeding events such as the case of Denisova Eleven, a 90,000-year-old teenage girl with a Denisovan father and Neanderthal mother discovered in Denisova Cave in southern Siberia. Her very existence is proof that glacial and interglacial pulses did not merely shape landscapes. They orchestrated migrations that brought together entire species. It also suggests that Neanderthals and Denisovans had larger ranges in Siberia than previously believed, especially during warm periods, and may even have pushed into Beringia and Alaska when conditions allowed. Experts note that the cave was home to Denisovan people, of which the father was a member, but the girl's mother had to have walked more than 65 miles to arrive at the cave, a journey scientists have nicknamed a walk of love. In Chagaskaya Cave, where her mother's group lived, remains and artifacts date to between 60,000 and 80,000 years ago, while the archaeological finds in Denisova Cave date back as far as 90,000 years. Among the artifacts is a polished green stone bracelet, one of the most remarkable finds of all. Her father's genome carried traces of an ancient encounter with a Neanderthal 10,000 to 20,000 years earlier, contributing about 3% Neanderthal DNA through his side of the family. Her mother belonged to a later-arriving Western Neanderthal population, genetically closer to Vindija cave Neanderthals in Croatia than to the much older Altai Neanderthal who had lived in the same cave 120,000 years earlier. The Vindija Neanderthals had interbred with modern humans around 120,000 years ago, leaving her with a faint genetic echo of tropical-adapted humans who had ventured deep into Asia long before she was born. 
By 90,000 years ago, modern humans had reached the Levant, but they had not penetrated into the Altai, and so Denisova 11's genome carries no direct sapiens ancestry. Instead, she embodied an extraordinary genetic mosaic, half Neanderthal, half Denisovan, with a whisper of earlier Homo sapiens. From the cortical thickness of her bone fragment, researchers infer she was just 13 to 15 years old at death. The interglacial that opened the Altai steppe allowed grasslands, tree cover and animal herds to flourish, drawing in both Neanderthals and Denisovans. In this corridor of overlap she was born, lived and died. Her hybrid nature captures the deep truth that glacial cycles were not barriers alone but engines of contact, shaping the entire evolutionary story of humankind. For two million years, shifting winds, expanding deserts, greening corridors and advancing ice sheets dictated not only where our ancestors could live, but also when they could thrive, migrate or die out. Every step into Eurasia, every meeting between Neanderthal and Denisovan, Every extinction and survival was orchestrated by these rhythms, through orbital wobbles, ice expansions, and shifts in vegetation that alternately blocked or opened the roads to new worlds. In East Africa, glacial cycles over the past 350,000 years swung between wetter and drier periods, pushing humans to innovate socially and technologically. By 100,000 years ago, small groups of Homo sapiens migrating throughout southern Eurasia in waves paced by astronomical rhythms. At times, green corridors opened between Africa and Eurasia, permitting low-density back-and-forth movements that may have led to early encounters with Neanderthals well before the famous interactions of 50,000 years ago. Supercomputer models suggest that these overlaps were not rare. They occurred repeatedly around 78,000 to 120,000 years ago, and possibly even as far back as 210,000 and 320,000 years ago. Each glacial pulse created new contact zones, mixing populations and genes. The story stretches further back still. Over 400,000 years ago, hominins were already adapting to these cycles with smaller, more varied toolkits. By 280,000 years ago, hafted points, barbed bone tools, grindstones and clothing implements appeared. Each was a survival strategy, buffering groups against the unpredictability of shifting glacial regimes. Archaeological evidence also shows long-distance trade by 130,000 years ago, with raw materials transported nearly 200 miles from their source. This was more than economics, it was a social safety net. Such alliances offered refuge when ice advanced or game grew scarce. In evolutionary terms, these processes also reflected source-sync dynamics. During favorable interglacials, productive regions acted as sources, sustaining larger populations and generating expansions into new territories. In harsher glacial phases, marginal areas became sinks, unable to sustain themselves without incoming migrants or gene flow. Populations in these sinks often dwindled or disappeared, leaving only those in the source regions to recolonize once conditions improved. The hybrid girl herself is the embodiment of this dynamic. Her mother's western Neanderthal group had pushed eastward during an interglacial expansion, only to merge with Denisovans in the Altai, a sink region that intermittently supported life depending on the ice's reach. In this fragile overlap, new lineages were born, carrying forward the signatures of glacial rhythms. Far from being a footnote, such source sink dynamics were central to the ebb and flow of human evolution, ensuring that the greatest experiments in our ancestry, including Denisova 11, were written into the bones of those who survived. The deeper one looks, the clearer it becomes that human evolution is inseparable from glacial rhythms. Between 500,000 and 400,000 years ago, Neanderthals and Denisovans diverged from Eurasian Homo heidelbergensis, while Homo sapiens branched from a separate population around 300,000 years ago. These divergences unfolded not in static worlds, but in landscapes sculpted by cycles of ice and warmth. The lesson is that glacial cycles did not merely test human resilience, they created it. The opening and closing of corridors, the expansion of forests, the retreat of ice, and the spread of deserts favoured those who were flexible, inventive, and social. These qualities became the hallmark of Homo sapiens, enabling us to spread across nearly every environment on Earth.
When Homo sapiens finally spread across Europe in force, the stage was already occupied by Neanderthals, who had endured in Eurasia for at least 300,000 years. These cousins of ours had weathered numerous glacial cycles, from bitter glacial freezes to warmer interglacials, adjusting their hunting strategies accordingly, reindeer in the cold, red deer in the warmth, shifting southward when ice tightened its grip. They were resilient, but their toolkits were less specialized than ours, and their long-distance exchange networks less extensive. Homo sapiens' symbolic abilities, broader diets, and stronger social ties provided a competitive edge in the face of